Welcome. In this video, we'll be demonstrating how to perform a frequency response function measurement using LMS Test Lab impact testing. First things we'll need are our impact hammer, our accelerometer, our test object, which is a brake disc today, and our SCADIS. To begin, we'll open up Test Lab impact testing. As you can see here, we have the impact testing shortcut on our desktop. You can go ahead and double click this. Once that loads, you see this blank gray screen. You can come to the top left here, click this white page to open up a new project. Once this loads, you can do a file, save as. Now that we have the project saved, we can go ahead and proceed to channel setup. Within channel setup, we want to make sure that the channels we're using are on. We also want to make sure that our reference channel is the hammer. In this case, that's going to be channel one. Then we can come over here to point ID and we can uh, change this if we'd like. Our next option is direction. If we wanted to animate our geometry after we calculate our FRFs in this measurement, uh, then the changing the direction is important. For this case, not so much. We change our input mode to ICP. Our measured quantity for our impact hammer is going to be force. And then for our actual sensitivity, we're going to take a look at the calibration sheet that comes with our transducer. And for this one, it tells us it's 11.2 millivolts per newton. And we can go through these steps for the accelerometer. Change this to ICP. And then actually, with this accelerometer, we are able to go to this top right here, channel setup. Select read TEDs. TEDs are transducer electronic data sheet. So what this does is when we hit refresh, the information for the accelerometer comes up in test lab. You can select this, insert, go back to our channel setup page. And as you can see, test lab adds in the actual sensitivity for the accelerometer, tells us the transducer type, and even gives us the serial number. Once that done, once that is done, we can go ahead and go to impact setup. In impact setup, you can see that there are a few different worksheets here at the top. First one is going to be trigger. This is where Test Lab is going to try to figure out a good trigger level for our measurement. We can do this by start scope, hitting the object multiple times, pressing stop scope, and then doing apply suggested. As we can see, Test Lab adds this little black line here, which is their recommended trigger level. If need be, we can come in here and manually change this. Once that's complete, we can head to the next worksheet, which is bandwidth. We can press the start button and hit our object. Now what we want to look at in the bandwidth worksheet is this top left window. This is actually showing us the frequency spectrum for our hammer. What we want to do is switch this y-axis to decibels. And then we want to analyze how much of a drop-off we have in the signal. Some places, uh, some people like to follow a standard rule of thumb of no more than 10 dB drop-off. Others keep it to 3. Uh, regardless, this signal has much, much too great of a drop-off, and it actually even peaks after the drop-off. What I mean by that is, you can see this yellow tag says that this signal starts around 24. And so then if we took it to about here, which is our 10 dB drop off, we're really only good up to a frequency of about 367 hertz. And we want to be a lot higher than that. So the first thing we can do to try to fix this is switch out our hammer tip. Right now we have a rubber tip on our hammer, which is a very soft tip. So we're going to try to switch that out for a metal tip and we're going to start our check bandwidth again. And as we can see, we get a much flatter signal across our whole frequency range of interest, and we are well within a drop-off range of about 6 dB. So that's good. We can go ahead and go to the windowing worksheet. Here, we can go ahead and start, impact our object. And as we can see, 
Our signal mostly dies down within our acquisition time, so Test Lab recommended 100%, which is actually no window at all. If we would like to add a window, for example, if our signal didn't die down during this acquisition time, we could come up here and drag down this line. And what this is doing is multiplying this signal here to this one. And you can see that result in this window here. So if we were to bring this all the way down, we can see that our signal dies down much earlier in our acquisition time. So that window is adding artificial damping, which is something that we don't want. For this example, we don't need much of a window. So we are ready to head over to measure. So once, once we're on the measurement worksheet, we can go ahead and press the start button. During the measurement, we get some displays that show up after each impact. The instantaneous FRF is going to give us a newly calculated FRF for each individual impact. We also get displays that show us the response and the input in both the time domain and the frequency domain. Once we've completed three hits, as our average is set to three, we've completed one full measurement. One thing we want to check is our coherence, which we see in this bottom right window here. Coherence tells us how repeatable our measurement is from hit to hit. When the coherence is equal to one, that means it's repeatable. We do see a couple dips here in our coherence, but these do line up with dips in the FRF also, which we call anti-resonances, and this is expected and is normal. We can also take a cursor here to our FRF and see where our peaks are. These are actual our resonant frequencies, so this is what we're taking this FRF for. For the specific one, we can see that this one's right around 1157, and we get another big peak right around 2625. And so that's how you calculate a good FRF using Test Lab impact testing. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching.